Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Established in 2017, Goodman's creates sustainable investment solutions for advice professionals and retail customers, focusing on tools that help customers engage with sustainable and responsible investing. The goal is to play a key role in redirecting capital to environmentally sustainable, socially responsible, and ethical business. The Goodman's Advisor Portal is a discovery, analytics, research, and advice support tool designed to give advisors the confidence to determine their clients' responsible investment needs, analyze portfolio holdings, and access institutional-grade environmental, social, and governance research for over 7,000 global equities, ETFs, and funds. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Clayton here from XY Advisor. Uh, Today, we're catching up with James uh, from Morphic and... uh, We're in the, I guess, the first early stages of our five-part ethical ethical investment series. And this is a a topic that a lot of advisors um, are interested in. But as I'm sure you probably know, James, it's not something that a lot of advisors know a lot about. And um, you were very kind enough to to say, you know, you're, you're willing to sort of come on and teach advisors a little bit about what ESG means and what it is and we've got a handful of topics we want to get through. Um, But before we get to all of that, you know, what's, uh, what's your background and what sort of brings you here today to, um, to sort of be an expert in this ESG? Well, Clayton, firstly, thank you for having me on today. Um, It's my absolute pleasure. Um, My background is um, over 25 years um, fund management experience. Um, Firstly in the UK, uh, the bulk of my career then being in Europe, in Switzerland specifically, and, and in the last four years moving down, uh, down to Australia and joining Morphic. I guess my first experience with, um, with ESG or, or the precursors to, to, to ESG were um, working for a, um, a reinsurance company, um, uh, a, a, a special kind of insurance company, if you like, um, for whom they were um, facing a lot of... Um, uh, newish risks um, on uh, in their insurance business, such as um, hurricanes, weather, environmentally uh, inspired risks, as well as health risks around things like um, smoking. Um, I was part of a team uh, responsible for managing um, the the assets of the the insurance company. Right. The penny dropped at some point um, that uh, if. On the one hand, the insurance business was being impacted by um, climate change. Uh, Wouldn't it be, or shouldn't it be consistent if we, um, the managers of the assets, were also um, uh, um, being uh, aware of of, of the impact of climate change on the companies that we invested in? And likewise, likewise inconsistent if we were investing in in, in tobacco companies, for instance, and yet the insurance business suffering from from risks related to uh, the population smoking. So um, this was back in uh, at the turn of the century around the tech, uh, the tech boom, um, 99, uh, 2000, uh, when um, concurrently in Switzerland, um, the UN, the United Nations backed um, a, a new outfit called the Principles of Responsible uh, Investing, uh, UNPRI, um, which was about um, signing up asset managers uh, to commit to um, uh, taking on board um, and integrating consideration of environmental, social, and governance risks into into their investing activities. So the company that I worked for was um, was a, a one of the first signatories to that. Um, around the same time, um, uh, an American chap called Al Gore, most of your uh, listeners will be familiar yeah. with that name, uh, yeah. was also um, very much. Um, Thinking about um, uh, how he could translate his, his environmental awareness into into um, the financial world, and he set up a he set up um, a business called Generation Investment Management, which is now one of the largest institutional um, asset managers at the forefront of, of 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 ESG investing, if you like. And we spent some time working with with, with those guys. And back then, 
this we really were the um, uh, the pioneers insofar as there wasn't an industry um, supplying information around the environmental risks that companies face. You know their 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 carbon footprint. Um, you know re, you know think, uh, information around the diversity of the boards and, and and the corporate governance and so on and so forth. So we really had to do the research um, ourselves um, and. For the bulk of my career uh, managing money, I've been involved in researching companies. So um, it was a fairly natural progression to say, well, okay, rather than just researching the, um, the, the financial aspects of, of companies that we might be investing in, let's, let's also consider um, these companies from an environmental and social and a, a governance perspective as well. So, so for the last um, short 20 years, I've, 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 I've been doing that. Um, for, for personal reasons, I moved to Australia and um, uh, through my network um, uh, found um, uh, Morphic Asset Management, um, the founders of which came from um, probably the pioneer in ethical investing uh, here in Australia, a business called Hunter Hawk, no longer exists. Um, but they set up on their own because they believed they could do a, do a better job. And um, so I joined that company, um, a small employee-owned boutique, uh, um, and, and since then we've you know, increased the number of products, increased the, the assets under management um, in, 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 in uh, um, products that are invested um, globally, uh, not just domestically here in Australia. Um, and the other point of differentiation is that um, we're um, uh, long short investors. So not only do we uh, take long positions, invest in companies, we're also able to take short positions, i.e. .e. profit from you know, the valuation of these companies going down. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Now, for, I guess, you know, probably the best place to start is what does ESG mean? Well, uh, the, the initials mean environmental, social and governance. Um, there's a lot of um, jargon around this. Um, it's quite similar to CSR, corporate social responsibility. There's, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a number of um, uh, you know, different ways of, of expressing this. I think the term that we prefer, prefer to use is responsible investment. Um, right. that, that, that captures all behavior um, related to uh, corporate social responsibility, consideration of environmental and social and, and, and governance um, issues. Um, but I think it's useful if, I, if we take a step back and, and look back to history as to, as to how um, you know, thinking about ESG started and, 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 and where we are now. So really, um, you can go back a century or so um, to the Quakers and various other faith-based organizations who right. just took the decision that um, you know, in, 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 in their business activities, they, they really did not want to have any contact with certain activities that, um, you know, that conflicted with their values. Um, you know, alcohol would be, a, uh, would be an obvious one. Um, so back then, there were organizations effectively investing um, and avoiding exposure to, to certain industries. Um, more recently, in the 70s, in the 1970s, um, the, the, the asset uh, management industry um, started to take this a bit more seriously. Um, and again, that was very much value driven, um, be it the values of the client or the values of the, 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 the fund manager um, uh, managing the money. Um, so as it happens in the example of, 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 of Morphic and the, and the company before that, um, the employees of the company felt very strongly about, um, about the negative um, you know, consequences of, 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 of tobacco, alcohol, um, of extracting hydrocarbons from, 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 from the earth, of, of, of the, yeah, the, the, the environmental consequences of, of the emissions of that, of the manufacture of weapons and so on and so forth. So, so naturally, um, it felt absolutely the right thing to do to say, well, we're going to invest you know, um, our clients' money alongside our responsibility to make good investment decisions. We're actively not going to invest in those types of companies. Um, right. So that that really is the, the most simplistic level of, of ethical investing, as, as, as it's called. Um, now, um, as well as avoiding, um, one should also perhaps consider um, those companies that 
um, aren't explicitly in an area you want to avoid, whether they have um, any business interactions or any, 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 any risks related to um, some of the things that we, uh, that, that we don't like. Um, now, what we believe um, and, and, uh, and our responsible investing peers do as well is that the world is starting to price some of um, the externalities, some of the risks that are, have always been out there, but we're much more conscious of, um, particularly around the environment, for instance. Um, also around um, uh, social risks, um, for instance, think of the gig economy and, 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 and you know, um, in, 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 in uh, um, employing people on, on, on low wages and, 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 and potentially putting people, employees, into a position of sort of modern slavery, if you like. Um, and also then thinking about the governance mechanisms with, 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 uh, within companies. Um, you know, are companies accountable to their shareholders or, or simply, you know, you know, accountable to, them, to, to themselves? Um, so... Uh, basic ESG investing uh, nowadays really says, okay, so as well as researching companies as to whether they're good uh, financial investments or not, we're going to look at the companies to see if um, we can identify any uh, material, and that's the key word, materiality um, in terms of risks related to um, uh, the environment, social or governance um, exposures of the particular company. So at the very basic level, it's risk management. Secondly, um, when we're looking for the risks that the company might face in those areas, let's consider the opportunities as well. Are there any positive opportunities that the, you know, the company, uh, you know, a particular company faces um, uh, to you know, further um, grow its business in, in you know, these areas, for instance? Um, now, we, uh, as a fund manager, um, we integrate that thinking into all of our investment decisions. Now, the next version of ESG investing, if you like, is what we call um, thematic or sustainable investing. So this is where a fund manager might say, I'm only interested in investing in companies that have a specific uh, positive environmental, social or governance angle about them. Now, the environment's the obvious, the obvious um, space, so you can think of funds that only invest in renewable energy, for instance, or solar funds or um, uh, um, water-related funds. So um, that's the, the second main area of, 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 ESG, of ESG investing, and that's uh, what we call, as I said, um, thematic um, investing. Um, the third variety, um, which I think has um, uh, come about much more recently, is impact investing. Mm. Now, impact investing, um, I mean, it means different things to different people. Um, our uh, belief is um, that impact investing is where you explicitly expect that there is some cost to your financial return from your investment. Right, okay. Um, so you might, for instance, um, invest in a project and um, take the active decision to pay away a percentage of those revenues to a particular charity. So gotcha. the definition, your returns, your, your financial returns are, are lower than they might otherwise be, but there's an explicit measurable impact um, you know, on society or on, on, on the environment. Right. So that's a pretty clear line then. So ESG, there's no expected financial impact and impact investing, you are expecting a financial impact to yourself. Uh, there's an explicit one. Now, I wouldn't say, I, 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 I would say there is still a financial impact of, of picking, uh, 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 positive impact from picking companies um, that have good governance, for instance, companies that have you know, um, a good social impact. Um, that's, it, it's, it's just that it's harder, it's, it's, it's not measurable in, you know, in, a, in a sense. It's difficult to pick, um, it's difficult to pick um, the explicit um, or measure the explicit um, impact of that good social behavior or, or, or good governance. Whereas in impact investing, it's explicitly you know, uh, measurable, the financial impact that you're having. And then, right. so that's more it's philanthropic almost. Well, so the final, the final uh, um, type of ESG uh, that we consider is, is, is exactly that, uh, philanthropy. So right. with, with philanthropy, your, your investment, you're effectively, you're, you're giving away. The cost is 
you know, your capital is gone uh, and it benefits somebody else. There is no return to you. That's, that's the ultimate um, ESG investing. Now, um, that's um, not a commercial decision and there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no business around uh, um, uh, um, philanthropy other than, other than you know, wealthy people wanting to have a, a positive impact and, and, and donating their money. Yes. Yeah, wow. Okay, cool. So uh, that's a huge spectrum. So you, there's anywhere from um, uh, like an advisor's job obviously is to um, up until very specifically uh, told to not do this um, in the case of say philanthropy, but the goal of a financial planner is to bring as much money into the lives of, of the clients as possible. So um, philanthropy, I guess, is um, sort of that, I would imagine wealthy, older individuals um, who just want to give back to society, whereas uh, that's not going to be anywhere near as common as, say, um, advisors, well, actually, uh, it's probably more consumer-led, consumers wanting to only invest in companies that don't have a substantial uh, impact, um, and don't have a substantial negative impact on the world, and it doesn't have a substantial or any negative impact on their financial outcome. Absolutely, and and it's absolutely our experience talking to advisors that 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 is um, a decision taken by the client. The cl yeah. cl clients are ask, asking people. People are working out that that uh, particularly in the context of their, their super funds that, and particularly down here in Australia, because because the economy is so sort of natural resource orientated that that people are working out that. Um, you know, it's 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 fairly certain that there, you know, any one of the large industry super funds is, you know, almost by definition, uh, because they're investing in Australia, going to have some exposure to the coal industry, for instance. Of course, people don't like that. That's yeah. that's people, um, you know, uh, reflecting their own values in in what product that they look for from from their financial advisors. Um, and at the end of the day, regardless of whether the financial advisor shares those values. The client wants it, so you know the financial advisor wants to be able to, you know, be able to pro provide a, a suitable product from the suite of products that he, that he or she provides. Um, is there something as simple as, let's say, a client just doesn't care too much, you know, but they just don't want coal for whatever reason? Just don't want coal. They're happy to do whatever. They just don't want coal. Is is there a way for an advisor to say, well, here is an easy solution where you get everything except for coal? Well, there are some thematic funds um, that, for instance, will say, you know, uh, we're a uh, um, you know, hydrocarbon free or a, uh, right. yeah, um, so no oil, gas, coal um, uh, in the portfolio. Uh, there's some super product that's exactly that. Um, you know that's a, that's a subset of 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 um, you know the the ethical investing. You know basically saying these are these are my values. I want to exclude exposure to that, um, and there is there is product for that. Uh, probably probably um, coal hydrocarbons is is the biggest sort of theme if you like because it's. Yeah up front and center at the moment in people's consciousness, you know, the, yes. the environment. Um, you, you don't find, so, uh, I, I'm not familiar with product that say, for instance, only excludes um, uh, alcohol and tobacco. Or, you know, yeah. That's a, a, smaller, a smaller subset. Yeah, okay. I'd imagine that would be the case. Um, what about from a, so let's, let's actually, there's two things I want to talk about. There's the bottom up interest. So you've got this, growing groundswell of um, consumers and clients wanting this from advisors. And then you've also got this sort of top down legislative, uh, you know, fiduciary duty, super fund trustee responsibilities. Um, so you kind of got this squeezing from the bottom up and the top down. Can you just walk us through what you've seen so far to prove those two demands are coming together? Well, the way that I put it is, is, is when, when, when I'm talking about ESG and somebody or the audience or somebody in the audience says, well, quite frankly, I really don't care. You know, mm. my values are different. Yeah. I say, well, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Everybody has their own values. That, that's great. Totally. 
But the reason why I, I'm sat in front of that audience educating is that um, we can see, and the numbers suggest, that there's such a growing weight of, of, of client demand and thus money wanting to be invested in this way that, you know, like a snowball that starts small at the top of the mountain, mm. it rolls down the mountain and it gets bigger and bigger. Now, by some measures, um, over 50% of investable assets um, in Australia uh, are now invested with some uh, consideration of E, S and G factors. Yeah, right, um, really? Yeah, I, 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 think that's, um, I think that's the broadest measure. Um, and sure. I, think, I think it's a really optimistic measure. But, but the point is, you know, four years ago, that number was, say, 20%. The growth is, is huge. And, and even if you don't share the values, it matters. Because if more and more um, asset managers like um, ourselves are investing on that basis, more and more um, of, uh, you know, um, our, our values are going to be reflected in, in, in share prices. Yeah. It makes sense that uh, that um, uh, over time, if that trend continues, there's going to be more and more sellers of coal companies, for instance, right. um, yeah. and, and, and and more and more buyers of of companies that um, don't have an environmental uh, a negative environmental impact. You know, have good social practices uh, uh, and, and good governance. So, so even if you don't care, I think it cares to be aware of these trends. Well, um, is is that from the top down? Is there, you know, is there sort of pressure from government uh, pushing down to the super funds and other um, asset managers? Is is that on the horizon at all? Has it begun? Is there any talk of it? Oh, absolutely. Now, um, uh, industry bodies such as the the, um, the for, formerly the United Nations uh, PRI that I referred to earlier, now known as the PRI, are global um, and have. Um, you know, ever-growing numbers of asset managers as, as, as members, um, they're, they're imposing standards upon us. Um, those uh, types of industry bodies are working with legislators in, in different parts of the world. So, um, you know, legislation is different. Uh, the way uh, pension uh, super uh, funds are, are legislated here is, 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 is different from the U U.S. Sure. Yeah, of course. But absolutely, legislators are, are well aware of this. And um, probably in the biggest market, which is the US, um, there's certainly active discussion as to what the definition of fiduciary duty should be in this day and age. Now, okay. now fiduciary duty is a, a legalistic term that goes back a long time. Um, and uh, particularly within the, 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 the pension world, the question is, um, you know, should, shouldn't we be formalizing this idea of considering, you know, risks uh, and material issues beyond just the financial, you know, re returns, um, you know, as, as, a, as, a, um, you know, as a fiduciary to, to you know, um, looking after other, other people's pension money. Um, so it's, it's, it's uncoordinated in the sense that, you know, what one part of the world um, does won't necessarily be, be, be followed. But there's, I think, again, back to this point of client demand, there's sufficient momentum that laws will change. Now, um, there's certainly active uh, discussion here in Australia. Um, it's made somewhat difficult if you think of um, the super industry and the industry super funds. Certainly, there's some super funds who are backed by industries that yeah, we're talking about being negative. Now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, exactly. there's, there's clearly a political angle to that. Um, yeah. Without a doubt, um, in, in, in 10 years' time, um, there will be no question that it will be yeah, the responsibility of asset managers to consider these, these, additional, these additional risks. Cool. Wow. Um, now, if I think to the research that I've done in my time to the performance of um, ethical funds, there was definitely an issue, even if it was just a couple of basis points. But for whatever reason, it just seemed that ethical investing was more expensive and it got a lower return. Um, do you have any kind of academic uh, evidence to suggest Otherwise, that that is maybe not as accurate as myself or is believed in the broader advice community. Look, um, if you look hard enough in the academic world, you'll find find evidence to support any 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 assertion, <laughs> any outcome. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but I think, um, you know, trying to keep my, my opinions balanced, um, I think there is a growing body of evidence that there is not a cost, a performance cost. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm absolutely confident that if you just think about, you know, risk management um, and think about, um, you know, the environmental side of things, um, I'm absolutely confident that um, there are many uh, um, hydrocarbon assets owned by companies that are in the ground and will remain in the ground for, for, for forever. So by definition, those assets are declining in value over, 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 over time. So, so by, um, by if no other, uh, um, if for no other reason other than risk management, you know, looking at companies in terms of, you know, whether there's any material negative environmental um, right. exposure is going to save me money over the, over the long term. So you're saying there's an argument to be had that perhaps Exxon Mobil has X litres or X barrels of oil under its current reserves valued at X dollars. Um, and maybe oil is a bad example. Let's go coal. So, pick some big coal company they've got x amount of ton of coal uh in their reserves uh, which the company is valued on and because of these bottom-up top-down trends um we're going to see less demand for it over the long term you're suggesting that there is a long-term downward trend to the valuation of these companies anyway Absolutely. Um, so if you're if you're if you're measuring performance re relative to a benchmark that includes you know um, coal assets, then then you know, avoiding them is going to be a, a good a good thing. The, yeah. Another way to answer your question is that um, I've yet to see um, somebody um, decompose performance into um, uh, ESG factors. To be able to say, well, sorry, what, what does that mean? Sorry. So, so if you if you think about um, uh, um, uh, if you're measuring the performance of of of, of a fund, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know you can you can um, you can apply quantitative techniques to to um, to work out with quite a level of significance um, how exposed, for instance, your portfolio is to interest rates, mm, yep. to other macro to, to to macroeconomic factors. Yeah. Um, so this is this is what's called factor risk. So um, uh, you can use this alongside looking at you know your sector exposure um, of of your portfolio relative to to to, to an index. Um, I've yet to see um, somebody um, uh, sort of quantify um, you know, environmental risks, the social risks we talk about, and the governance risks we talk about um, in a, in in, in a, a quantitative way. I.e., being able to say, well, look of of you know. Two percent outperformance. You know, fifty percent of that was from, from ESG factors, and one hundred and fifty percent, and one point five percent from from other factors. I've I've yet to see it. So, so, yeah. And, until we get there, we we're, we're not going to be able to explicitly say there's 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 um, yeah uh, a quantifiable cost or, or or benefit. But intuitively. Going back to this idea of stranded assets, intuitively it makes sense to 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 me that um, there are certain there are certain um, you know uh, um, bad activities digging up hydrocarbons, um, yeah, selling cigarettes um, that um, are going to become less popular and uh, and, and 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 less um, valued um, activities going forward. So to avoid those in your investments is, is probably going to have a benefit. Ah, very cool. So, um, so if there's no reporting, at, at least as, as you've just given an example that 4% was from this and 1.5 was from ESG, or, um, how does an advisor uh, deliver to a client that kind of reporting result. Well, I think that becomes that becomes um, incumbent uh, on the the asset manager. Um, you know, an asset manager who claims to take into consideration um, you know, environmental, social, and governance um, issues when they're when they're picking the companies that they're investing in, um, it's incumbent upon them to 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 provide some commentary around that. Um, so, for instance. Um, 
another commitment um, that we make to our clients and many of our, our, our peers do as well is to um, is to engage with the companies that we invest in. That means we talk to them. We learn, you know, in the process of researching a company that we might invest in, we talk to the, the company. We might meet with senior management. Um, we're we're committed to do that, and we're also committed to ask, you know, the, the questions around the environmental, social, and governance issues that are material to that that particular company. And then I write about it. So um, we, for instance, will will write blogs about companies that we um, that we've uh, um, had active engagement with. Um, we publish, um, and again, it's a responsibility of, of ourselves and our peers to, 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 to publish on a regular basis um, a record of, um, of, of our engagement activities. So um, shortly we'll be publishing um, a summary of our uh, engagement for the last financial year. Um, that includes two case studies of companies whereby um, we identified um, uh, uh, in one instance um, an aspect of, of their governance um, which meant that we uh, felt that shareholders were not being treated fairly. Um, we wrote to the board of directors. We engaged with the company that way. Um, we didn't get the change that we required, so we wrote to the regulator. Um, we didn't get the change we required after that, so we started to engage with um, the media. Um, yeah, publishing the letters that we had written to the company in, in, in a public forum, um, generating media um, interest um, yeah, around this subject. Um, and eventually that pressure came to bear on the company and they made the changes that we asked of them. So we, we're committed to be transparent. So, um, so what the you know, advisors should be asking of their fund managers is to say, well, if you're claiming to be responsible investors, you know, show us. You, you, you know, Commit to full transparency. Show us all the holdings in the um, in, in in your portfolio. Um, mm. Show us uh, you, know, you know documentary evidence of 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 engagement you've had with the companies that you you invest in. Now, we, for instance, have absolutely no problem um, publishing um, every position that we hold in in the public domain. Um, many of our peers, for instance, will only publish the top ten. Um, yeah, that's a common thing, right? That, that, that's 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 the common standard. So, yeah. so the question that an advisor should be asking, or a, a, a client, is that if 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 a certain fund claims to be responsible, and yeah. yet you can only see their top ten holdings, what's to stop them? You know, on the one hand, saying we don't invest in coal, but you know, having having their eleventh, twelfth, and thirteenth holdings that they don't publish being invested in coal companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I. Definitely appreciated going onto your website and reading the blog about your day out on the boat with Philip Morris. <laughs> I'm just <joking. laughs> um, well, yeah. Look, it's a, a mantra we have, and, and and again, this comes back to, to values. You know, um, these values are shared amongst us as employees of the company. It's embedded in the culture of of, of our company. And and I say to to my junior colleagues, you know, live your life. Um, in a way that you're happy for that to appear on the front page of 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 of, of the newspaper, yeah, yeah. and and that way, um, you know that uh, uh, that says something about us, and 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 you know that extends into you know how we believe we have an impact. We're not an impact investor, but we have we believe we have an impact by by supporting companies um, that are doing uh, um, positive things for the benefit benefit of the planet and, uh, and society, and also by calling out those companies that um, uh, you know um, behave in a bad way. Um, and uh, what is screening? What sort of positive and negative screening? Okay, so this. This is back to, 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 to the beginning of ethical investing. It's simply saying, um, at the beginning of our business, um, our first client said, we do not want exposure to um, oil and gas, alcohol, tobacco. Um, right. so, so screening, a negative screen is, is the process whereby we say, you know, we can invest globally. Um, we define the universe of companies that we can invest in. And if you like, we, we mechanically screen out um, those sectors that um, we don't wish to be exposed to. How does, okay, so I'm sort of imagining um, you've got a normal, say, long short fund over here, and then you've got an ethical long short fund over here, and you've got a, uh, you know, passive and active over here, and you've got ethical, passive and active over here, and I'm like, you know, domestic, international, whatever. Like, it's almost like 
all normal investing plus ethical exists everywhere, including VC, PE. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's a question. How, how could you have an ethical bond fund? Like how, what about, what about bonds? Like, especially, you know, uh, uh, not so much corporate bonds, but sovereign bonds. Well, well let, let, let's start with corporate bonds because that is that is a um, a growing um, area within within the uh, responsible investing world. Um, the way that that works is that um, a company um, they're called green bonds, unsurprisingly. Right. Uh, they, they so a company a company uh, raises money via issuing a bond, and and they raising that money for a specific. Issue, for instance, investing in a, a, you know, a utility company raising raising money to only invest in a in a solar farm, for instance. Sure. Uh, so the holders of, 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 of that bond who receive interest over over time are absolutely certain that um, uh, they're financing something positive, yeah, as opposed to just financing general activities of 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 of, of the company. Uh, at, at a government level, you ask the question. I, I think I think they're really. Um, I, I'm not aware of um, product that invests in, um, you know, tries to turn whether or not governments are, um, you know, ESG friendly. I mean, uh, um, I think that's a that's a harder a harder task. Definitely, yeah. That 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 was my uh, that was my original thought. Um, and then, so uh, as an advisor, how what would you say is the three easy things that? What's the three easy questions? Three th three easy things that an advisor can do tomorrow if a client goes knock knock knock. I'm interested in ethical in some capacity. What's their first step what should they do and the first step is to go um, to the website of the responsible investment association of australasia um, otherwise known as ria um, that's um, an in industry body for um, uh, fund managers asset managers like ourselves um, across all asset classes so equity bonds private equity venture capital um, uh, and they um, certify um, product, uh, right? Okay, like the funds that we manage, right. um, and that process of certification um, is really about um, looking under the hood and checking that we actually, you know, practice what we preach. Um, there's a lot of what we term greenwashing going out, going on out there. Um, it's you know, the popularity or growing popularity of, of 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 ESG product is not wasted on the marketing departments of many financial institutions. Um, right. And 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 um, so product certification um, gives um, the the advisor and their clients um, uh, a, a level of an additional level of um, comfort that the fund manager is actually doing what they they, they say they're committed to doing. Great. So the real website has um, a listings of um, uh, products across. All those different asset classes, um, also across the super fund uh, industry, and also into some financial institutions, some banks that have also made commitments to to to, to behave in a in a more um, uh, ethical way. Um, so I would say that's that's a good place to start. Um, yeah, product listings there. Um, the advisor can be confident that there's been a level of um, a level of assurance, if you like, undertaken. Um, you know, us as fund managers to have our product certified, we have to we have to um, uh, fulfil an assessment on an annual basis. Uh, sometimes um, there'll be a third party um, auditor come in to you know check that, check documentation, and so on and so forth. Um, the same is true of, of the PRI is, uh, is is a global a global body doing exactly that. Um, the PRI uh, publishes its assessments. Um, of, of its signatories, um, like ourselves, um, in the public domain. Um, so uh, it, it gives us a, a grade. Um, we've just been through the 2019 assessment and achieved um, um, the highest ranking A plus across all relevant modules. Uh, puts us at the top of the pile in um, here in Asia and also also globally. So so the, one of the, the purposes of of that kind of uh, um, industry organisation is to to provide a level of, of, of assurance that you know we are you know we are good to our word, um, so that's a good starting point. Um, then, 
really it's about you know um, about asking us managers asking us to show portfolios asking us to talk about talk about um, uh, you know case studies where we've 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 you know spotted um, you know risks in you know environmental risks in companies and, and engage with the, the management to try and bring about change um, you know it's just just transparency is, is, is very helpful um, for the for the clients awesome and um, James if there's a, any advisors out there that are interested to learn more about um, Morphic about yourself um, how would they go about finding out more about you or reaching out like what's the process look a good a good place to start is um, our website um, www.morphicasset.com um, again we're committed to full transparency um, there's a huge amount of resource there about um, about our product about our process um, uh, a lot of case studies uh, around um, around companies that we've been invested in. Um, uh, a lot of commentary um, on uh, not just companies, but on on macroeconomic uh, views, issues, our view of the world. Um, we're active contributors to uh, um, to newspapers such as um, the AFR. One of my colleagues has, has a, is a columnist uh, has a column for for the AFR on a regular basis. Um, you know we're 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 often called to to appear on uh, on various business channels on on, on TV and and, and radio. Um, yeah, you know, it's it, it, yeah. We we hold ourselves to a very high standard in terms of what we do, and and also you know getting the message out there um, about what we do um, because we believe um, we need to bring up many of our peers to those those higher standards to to achieve better outcomes for for you know the broader you know, broader world and society. Right, that's a get on the website. Give yep. us a call. Um, yep. uh, we also hold um, uh, regular roadshows around Australia, not just the, the, the major cities. Um, we, we go out into uh, some of the, the, the smaller towns um, where our clients are um, and give clients the opportunities to, to, to ask questions of us. Uh, you know, again, that's how we um, allow our clients to hold us accountable. You know. To, to call us out if you know, and we do we've got uh, many a client who who are you know have experience in particular industries that we might be invested in and 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 they they call us out ring us up you know are you aware of you know what this company's done here and and so on and so forth it becomes oh. um, uh, it becomes a good two-way conversation and, and of course you know we're always learning from that um, and you know we certainly don't have a monopoly on wisdom and, and would never claim to do to do that, but but the best way we can we can demonstrate, you know, um, uh, that we're true to our word is to to put ourselves out there and and, and let people ask questions. So, on the phone, um, email, all our contact details are available on the web. Um, you know, we're not we've got nothing to hide from. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on. Not a problem. Thank you.